What's up guys? It's my birthday. Guess what I got for my birthday? A new gym. Um, joking, kind of. It really is my birthday today. And I really did get like a truck full of Prime stuff today. So I guess I technically yeah, yeah, did no, get a gym it, for my it birthday, wasn't right? joke at all. You got a gym yeah, for no, I guess I got a gym for but my birthday. But I got a gym for your birthday too. There you go. So <laughs> promised y'all last time that we were going to show y'all around the place a little bit. Have enough of it in here and enough of it set up to really give you a good glimpse as to what it's going to look like. So, uh... Let's go outside and we'll actually do the whole walk here. So, first and foremost, this is the way we walk in. I'm really excited about this uh, nice little incline we have for leg days. It's going to be a wonderful finisher. But anyway, so we walk in. We are here. Um, the gym is at our new uh, headquarters, corporate headquarters warehouse, everything. Uh, all of our inventory is out of here, so it is Labrada land through and through. But in that door, into this one. Pretty cool how his dad tricked him in being in the warehouse every single day. Yeah, right? He got me good. And here we are. So, um, so we're out here. We're all the cardio here. stuff, so. We'll give you a little walk through, mm -hmm. yeah. So, starting off, we have our cardio here. We'll be looking out the window. Um, right next to it's gonna be our posing area. Uh, got the good natural light coming through, and then we have all the LED light actually on dimmers, so really be able to get the light dialed. As funny as that sounds, it's important to be able to see. Um, over here, we're gonna have the upper body rack. So we have two racks from Elite FTS. This is one just gonna be for upper body. It's gonna have the uh, deadlift platform and all those attachments here. And on the other side of the gym, with all the leg equipment, we're gonna walk over there. It's gonna be the lower body power rack from Elite FTS also. And that rack will actually have a monolift on it. So definitely like specialized racks for upper body, lower body. But yeah, so posing area here, we're actually in the process of having a really big, you know, mirror on a wheelie stand made that's at an angle to be able to put here during posing practice to be able to see the back shots. Uh, like Brian said, the upper body rack will be going here. And then this is you know, uh, we actually just set it up this morning how I think things are going to stay. We have, you know, our dumbbells. They're the solid steel milled in pets from five all the way up to 200 pounds um, here. And then, you know, we set up all of the pressing machines on our first row. So just going down the line, have our arsenal flat, have the prime incline, the prime shoulder press, the hammer shoulder press, the hammer incline. And then this is personally one of my favorite things in the whole gym. This Cybex Smith is probably older than I am, but uh, it is my favorite Smith machine by a long shot. And I do a lot of my pressing work on a Smith machine, so really excited to have it. Um, there is no play with it, even with five plates on it. It's got super short throw, so you don't have to break your wrist to unrack it. I don't know if any of y'all are watching me and him look like idiots trying to use the safety stops as like racking devices. Last push workout, so uh, super stoked about this piece. Um, and it goes all the way down to the ground. Yeah, so we so. can pull and row on it too. Then coming to our second row of stuff, have our prime pec deck uh, and uh, rear delt fly. Um, you know, just a quick bit on the prime pieces. I have to give them a huge shout out. Um, one, for taking such good care of us on everything and uh, getting it to us as quick as they did, but two, making what I think are some of the you know, best pieces on the market between them and Arsenal. Um, really enjoy uh, training on these pieces. Uh, honestly can't believe I get to train them on them daily now. So uh, what makes them so cool is you know, besides the fact that they are you know, smooth as butter, especially all the way loaded up, which is something a lot of people don't think about. You know, a lot of machines, you start getting them loaded out and they start getting all wanky. But uh, they're super solid, but you're also able to really uh, alter where the resistance curve lies, like where it gets heavier and where it gets lighter, which is, you know, a really beneficial thing to be able to do to really dial in the movements and, you know, match the muscle's strength curve to the resistance curve. So some meathead nerd shit that I will definitely be delving into in depth in the coming weeks, but just kind of telling y'all why it's special. Um, prime shoulder lateral, got the prime seated row. Got the Arsenal chest supported row. This thing, uh, it's been affectionately dubbed the humbler by the bodybuilding community. Um, 
we use 25s on it, and I'd like to think we're pretty strong. So definitely a humbling machine. Um, the hammer isolateral, I really like this piece, and this is probably my next, you know, favorite, you know, don't see it all the time piece. I think this Nautilus pull down, the plate loaded one. Um, Joe Bennett put me onto it, hypertrophy coach, uh, showed me how to use it and just why it was so awesome. And, you know, really is, in my opinion, you know, the most anatomically correct, you know, lat pull down there is. So very excited to be working really regularly on this piece. Uh, last, in terms of upper body equipment that we have is the Life Fitness uh, four stack. What's really cool about this, and it's not put together yet, is that both the rowing station and the pull down station is unilateral, meaning you know there's a cable for each arm. So we're able to do. You've seen us train a lot, you know, putting benches, you know, like leaning into things and really improvising, to be able to get the proper alignment and stuff. Well, now we have the machine that's made for it. Imagine that. Yeah, we can fix the. We bench have the right tool for the yeah. job. Imagine that. And because it's our gym, we can fix where, where we want the bench and we can tape it off. So, I mean, that's the cool thing, too, is how we want the benches in, the, in all the squat racks and on this is we can... Oh, everything's going to be, like, left set up. I'm ordering enough daisy chains and bands just to leave everything set up. All right, anyways, moving on. Um, in this little blue square we got here, this will be uh, put together. This is Prime's, what's called Prodigy Rack. Um, if you have a home gym, if you have this rack in a bar, you basically have a whole gym. It's a really cool rack for those of you who haven't seen it. But uh, basically, it is a cable system that's adjustable from floor to ceiling. Uh, you know, much like, like the Life Fitness one, there's something you'll see in a lot of health clubs. What makes this one different is you can actually change the camming from like a 2 to 1 to a 4 to 1 resistance, meaning the stack will actually get heavy enough to do rows and pull downs with. And it actually has attachments to be able to do, you know, seated rows, seated pull downs. It comes with the dip station, comes with a roller to do split squats, comes with J cups to be able to have a bar on it, comes with safety stops to be able to squat in it. So we won't be doing all that stuff in it because we have other stuff to do that in. But like I said, it's basically like a home gym in a box. So this is a really cool piece I'm excited to have. Um, Full smorgasbord of prime wedges and CAS handles and all kinds of whatnots and accessories. Land, landmine to do some one arm T bar, some T bar row stuff. Yeah, that landmine actually goes on the uh, that Prodigy rack. Although with what it looks like, it looks like we can put it on any of the racks. Yeah. Um, moving on to the bars, all the bars in the gym, if they're a normal bar. Uh, meaning if it's a regular, you know, Olympic bar, a squat bar, a deadlift bar, they're all from Texas Power Bars. Um, you know, they've been supporting me for a while now, and whenever I called them up and said I want y'all's bars in the gym, you know, they took, they took care of us. So, uh, you know, really excited to have, you know, these bars in the gym. I think they're the best bars made, especially, you know, for what we do. Uh, and they're a Texas company. I'm big time on supporting, supporting the local outfits. So, shout out to them for taking care of us on the bars. Moving on to the leg stuff, favorite part. Okay, so I think we pretty much got every bit of leg equipment you could ever need to develop legs, or at least what we wanted. But we got the prime plate loaded extension, the prime plate loaded lion curl, have the Nautilus hack squat uh, to be able to do hip hinging stuff on it, and because Liv doesn't fit in an arsenal hack squat, let's be honest, right? A little midget ass. And then uh, this space right here, we're actually going to have a really old school seated Cybex hamstring curl. Uh, our boy Kyle, who owns Species Gyms here in Houston, actually found us one, and we're actually going to go get it from him later today. So, you know, huge shout out to Kyle with Species for finding us that seated ham curl. Uh, really excited to have it in here. And then. Really old school quantum uh, pull up dip station. Couldn't even tell you what brand the hyper is. It's just got the most important thing any hyper should have, and that is cut out for your nut sack. Um, one of my personal favorite uh, seated calf raises, and then my all time favorite standing calf raise, although I do need to like chisel this retardedly slick pad off and put grip tape on it so we don't die. But anyways, moving down the back row, this back row is all of the, uh, you know, the compound leg 
pieces. We got the uh, non-bilateral arsenal leg press, so the solid platformed one, which I really like because there's no play in it. Uh, we got the Rogers hip press. Really excited to use that piece. There's no gym around here that uses it. The only time I ever get to use this when I've been traveling. Um, Brian and I have tortured ourselves on this the last couple quad sessions. The Arsenal Pendulum is another piece that you know I literally used for the first time ever, uh, like two leg sessions yeah, ago. Yeah, two leg sessions ago. So, uh, really enjoying progressing on that, and it's one of those things. It's a uh, it's a novel stimulus, so it's good because there's a lot of a lot of runway that we can take up still. Unlike this thing right here, uh, I have anxiety for like two or three days before I know I need to squat on this because I'm 25 pounds away from having it maxed out at this point. So. Maybe your first quad day, and it will have to do that. And then this nice big square here is where the lower body Elite FTS rack with that monolift will be going. So, yeah, all the toys. And then from Elite FTS is all the benches, a yeah. bunch of accessory stuff. Specialty bars, we got like their football bar, their Cambridge Spider bar, safety squat bar, football bar, Swiss bar. Glute ham raise. Glute ham raise. So that truck shows up later on in the week. So there's a chance that next session that you'll see uh, everything will be here. And then if not next one, the one after that for sure. So anyways, we got to run. We're about to go have a cream or ice party and go deadlift. It's pull day and that's my week part. So time to take care of business. But uh, looking forward to taking care of business in here sooner than later. We'll make sure y'all see it. <laughs> First up today, uh, regardless whether it's quads or hamstring day, it's always going to start with calves. I've um, been training calves at least twice a week and first at my leg days for like 10 years now. So I do have great calves. No, it didn't happen overnight. Funny story, the reason that I actually started training calves the way that I did was the first guy that ever kind of helped me out with everything said my calves sucked and I needed to bring them up. So, you know, they're obviously a pretty good body part of mine now. So genetics do matter, but training them right doesn't matter. What's training them right? Same way as any other muscle, you know, taking this as to true absolute failure, which I think is something that's lost on most people on calves, because you don't reach failure when it hurts. You reach failure when you cannot physically move the weight anymore. This is one of those exercises that should feel like battery acid pumping through your veins, like halfway through it, let alone when you actually reach failure. So keep that in mind. As far as mechanical cues, really pay attention to keeping your hips, knees, and ankles all stacked over each other. You want to keep your glutes tight and your uh, quads tight so you're relatively straight. Really trying to have the only motion that's happening at your ankle joint. Whenever you're stretching down, you only want to stretch as far as you can while keeping the calf active. Don't let your ankles roll in. That means you're no longer on the calf and your Achilles is soaking all of it up. At the top, we want to get as big as we can, as far as a contraction as we can. And think about actually finishing ankle forward. So if you're sitting here, that's as far as I can get up, right? But if you think ankle forward, you'll get a little more. So think ankle forward at the top of each row. standing on to abductor adductor waiting on that machine it shows up a little later in the week but we do have my all-time favorite seated calf so I'm gonna do some seated calves too so after that we'll move on to our quads
said, normally after we got done with uh, standing, we'd go to abductors and adductor. Don't have that machine here yet, arrives this week, so we did some seated instead. And then from there, went directly to the uh, arsenal pendulum. Um, did a bunch of warm up, feeder, feeler, whatever you want to call them, sets. Uh, and then worked up to two and a quarter with that reverse, or with the normal band uh, per side. And then, so that was an extra 30 pounds over last time we did the machine. So both of us hit PR today at a new weight. Um, probably stay at that weight one more session and then move up again. But uh, yeah, so we're about to get to work on this thing. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a doozy. We'll work up to one, you know, all out top set. And uh, normally we do a back off set just because the gyms we've been training at uh, don't really care for the leg extension. But we have a nice, shiny, new car smelled prime leg extension. So uh, from here, after we hit our working sets, we're going to have it over to that prime extension. Probably work ourselves up to one hard straight set, then do like a little, you know, like metabolic pump torture set after that and then call it a day.
get the rest of it. What's up guys? So last time we gave you a tour of everything we had in the gym. Got the last pieces to the puzzle from Elite FTS delivered today actually. Still on the pallet, still in bubble wrap. So hope y'all are ready for some gym porn. We're about to cut open the benches because we need them today. Um, that and then shout out to my boy Ryan. He uh, donated this uh, crotch rocket you see right here <laughs> because no one wants a thigh gap, right? Team no thigh gap around here. Anyways, so let's go cut these benches open. Then we're going to head in there and train push. Look at that. Wide bench for wide boys. And those two logos. Oh, yeah, the logo's cut in. Thank <laughs> you. 
second day in the gym and uh, man the last two sessions have been the best bump I've had ever. Yeah. It's pretty cool being here. It's kind of walking around with a big like shit eating grin on my face <laughs> in between sets because we literally have everything. 
and it's completely ours. So, all jokes aside, um, you know, feel really, really, really blessed to be training here. You know, it's been a long time in the making, both, you know, getting to the point where it made sense to do this and then, you know, actually getting everything in here because it's been close to a year with shit on order. So, uh, it's really cool to see it all come to a head and know that uh, I'm home for the next decade, pretty much. I'm going to finish up my bodybuilding career here unless I uh, move somewhere else, and I don't see that with all my friends and family here. So this is home base for the next decade. It's pretty cool to be able to say that. But uh, getting to today's workout, um, definitely played with all of our new toys today. Um, what we did today will probably emerge as one of the push variations, you know, whether it's A or B, it's semantics, it's going to be one of the variations probably. Then the other day we're going to be incline pressing uh, dumbbells and then probably doing like a reverse band smith incline or, you know, an arsenal flat or something. But, you know, moral of the story is we now have, you know, four different options to chest press on. The arsenal flat, the prime incline, the cybex smith, and then dumbbells up to 200, so heavy enough. So. We went from having like one option to press on to four, so it's pretty awesome. Um, you know, from there, uh, we started out with pec decks, put some blood in there, moved on from there to the incline prime piece. Um, today's the first day we loaded that one peg instead of the two peg. Normally we load up the bottom peg so it really overloads at the top. Uh, loaded the one peg today, that's the, you know, kind of, you know, even resistance throughout the range of motion. Um, really liked it. Next time we do it, I'll probably end up putting uh, a little bit of the weight on the bottom because, you know, still once the triceps hit that mechanically advantage point, it's able to get a little bit of lockout. But, we did you know, that on the back off, though. So we did. We actually kept the same weight at the top on the machine, and then we just, on the back off set, we took off some of the middle plates and put it on the bottom today. Yeah, so really cool to have the ability to really alter the resistance curve with those prime pieces and uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know exactly how to do everything. I have a general understanding of it, but you know, over the coming weeks, we're going to really get everything dialed in and then share it with you all because I know more and more people are starting to have access to a lot of these prime pieces. So definitely keep you all up to date with that. Uh, from that prime incline, we did uh, two hard working sets there. Uh, I did a straight uh, set for my top set and then my back off set ended up doing a drop set because I was a little over ambitious with the weight I chose for my back off set. Um, so, you know, I did a drop set so I could still get into that rep range that I wanted to get into. Um, That's another thing too, establishing the numbers because it's not something we use. We've only a couple times in uh, Destination used that press. So, now that we have it very regular, so, we can uh, establish the numbers. Yeah, we have established numbers today and it's only up from here. So from that prime incline, went to the prime shoulder press, uh, worked up to a hard set there, then did a back off set, nothing out of the ordinary there. From there, went to the prime pet deck and actually did two hard, two failure working sets. From there, we went on to the cable station that is still completely disassembled except for the one part that we needed to use, so lucky us. Um, <laughs> so we did our two working sets of, you know, those really strict form, you know, I'm gonna call them punch laterals, really taking the trap out of it and then moved on to the prime lateral to finish up. Uh, we'd been doing those on an old school Cybex lateral, which is a great piece. It was my first time using that prime lateral today though, and uh, it is really, really cool uh, for a couple reasons. Um, a, you know, you can adjust the resistance curve like you can with all the prime pieces, but B, Brian and I actually fit in it. You know, the Cybex one that we've been using, you, know, you get in it like this and then expand yourself and the weight's like this far off the stack already so you can't move around and get yourself set so you know it was really awesome having something we actually fit in so that was nice yeah and really focus on punching down and stuff and not just being crushed so yeah and then uh you know after that um him and i both posed obviously i'm coming up on uh, nine weeks out tomorrow mm -hmm. and then you were three weeks after me for the first one yeah so 12 for the first one and then 15. And then 15 for North Americans. So uh, both of us posed after we trained today, took a look. Um, you know, him and I are close enough that, you know, the same thing's kind of happening with us right now and that is, you know, weight is falling off of us and our strength is going up. That's to be expected when prep starts, you lose that initial inflammation from, you know, the off-season diet and the uh, off-plan food. Um, everything gets a lot more dialed in, you know, water really falls off and, you know, things really start clicking and happening. Um, I lost, what, like five pounds yeah. in the last seven days? Yeah. Yeah, five pounds in the last seven days and I've never been stronger or feel better than I do right now. 
Still only doing 30 minutes of cardio fasted in the morning, so, and still eating 650 grams of carbs on training days, so. Yeah, you couldn't be in a better spot for. No, yeah, a lot of room to work with. No, uh, so you know, I, I know a lot of people as weeks go on and they see me getting leaner and leaner and leaner, they think that I am in a over diet. And you know, it, I, I can understand the concern based off of the look, but I'm still like drinking chicken breasts and like almost puking when I eat my food. I'm eating so much food right now. So while I am starting to get pretty lean right now, it's not because I'm suffering to do it. So um, I don't think we're gonna overshoot it at all. I think we're gonna do exactly what we want to do and that's be able to see my organs at, like <laughs> 10 to 12 days out. So I think we're on track to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like another thing is just seeing you every day is we added some food today. Yeah. So, because so. today is tomorrow's back day, which is um, going to be his focus for probably the rest of bodybuilding. Yeah. And, Pretty much. Uh, so we added some food today. And All you know, like when we food. first started today, the extra food probably would have been like a Whataburger triple triple and fries for the meal five. But you know, now that we're you know coming down a little bit and you know getting a little closer. Um, there is a time and a place for, you know, those huge caloric dumps, you know, both for the physique and for the mental break that it gives you. But, you know, at this point, I wasn't that flat today, and I definitely don't need a mental break right now. And so, your stomach looks great. And yeah, so there's no reason to put a big, you know, shit meal in there. So normally on today, uh, my meal four would be 300 grams of rice, my meal five would be 250, and then my meal six would be zero carbs. So what we decided to do today was leave meal four at 300 grams of rice, bump meal five from 250 up to 300. Then the last meal of the day, I'm gonna do 100 grams of carbs from cream of rice with an extra uh, 32 grams of nut butter. So adding, you know, and then we're also doing 150 grams of carbs post. So adding roughly 200 grams of carbs today, all from clean food, uh, you know, to fill me out a little bit and then to prioritize the back session tomorrow. Cause like he said, it is a priority and will be for the rest of my life probably, so. That's good. But um, yeah, anyways, we're going to leave y'all with this. Um, this will probably wrap up the third episode that we're going to put out. So if you've been liking them so far, please let us know in the comments. Like we've said in the last two videos, if you have any questions, you know, comments, concerns, positive feedback, negative criticisms, I know you trolls out there just love to let us have it. So let us have it. Please let us know in the comments um, anything we can do to make these better and more interesting. We definitely want to do it. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Labrada Nutrition's YouTube so you get updates when all these videos come out. We're about to start really getting all the other Pro Series athletes content up and rolling too. So the YouTube is about to get really interesting. Looking forward to sharing that with y'all. And we will see y'all next week. So I'm not going to claim to cook well. I will claim to cook certain things very well. This is one of those certain things. Um, tenderloin. How to cook perfect tenderloin. I did this on a muscle and fitness video and it was pretty well received, so I gotta give it to y'all too. Preheat the oven to 425. Get a cast iron smoking hot. Uh, you need ghee butter, and then I use uh, sea salt, black pepper, a little bit of Tony Sachery's, and garlic powder. Both sides of the steak. Enough ghee butter to where it rolls around in the pan. Sear it for two minutes a side and then pop it in the oven for five. And if those are thick cut fillets, they're gonna be perfect medium rare. I'll show you what they look like when we pull them out of the oven. Perfect medium rare. Mm.